Welcome to CS Guitars, the science of loud. It's finally happened. I've lived long enough to see myself become the villain. There's this tendency for anyone who loves the HM2 to collect any and all variations of the effect they can find. It's like a disease, an infection, a parasite in the mind controlling our actions. I've got the original, made in Japan with some non-original knobs. I've got the Waza version. I've got TC's Eye Master. You recently saw me blinding myself looking at the Swedish steel, and now the larval stage of my chainsaw parasite has burst forth from its chrysalis in the form of the ferocious worm. Sounds great in a Scottish accent, doesn't it? This is the Worm 2, or perhaps Worm Squared as it's written here, the new updated version from KMA Machines in Berlin. They've even got bears on their logo. I wonder if my logo should feature a couple of haggises. Or should that be Haggai? This one is serial number 8, so it's hot off the presses, and we're going to throw this through the oscilloscope to see what the Worm does differently. Before we get into the sound and circuit, let's take a moment to appreciate the terrifying toothed and sectile terror screen printed in the correct colour on the black enclosure. That's some sick artwork, and for those of you who get bent out of shape if the LEDs aren't placed in the eyes of the beast depicted in the art, there are five colour matched peepers peering out of the murky blackness to consume your living flesh. This features some top mounted jacks, for those of you who think that desperately matters, a standard size enclosure, and that gain knob is labelled Terror, just in case you weren't clued in on exactly what to expect from a pedal that looks like this. Now the EQ section is where the worm deviates from the standard HM2 format. If you cast your mind back to the very comprehensive video I did about the HM2 circuit back when I took a look at the Waza, then you'll remember that the original featured three active EQ filters controlled by two knobs. Low effects around 90Hz, where the fundamental frequency of the low E string is, and high is actually an upper mids control, affecting two filters centred at 1kHz and 1.3kHz. The Worm has a couple of EQ modes. If you're looking for standard HM2 sounds, and you can select HM2 on the mini toggle and leave the highs and the low mid controls at their neutral position. And then the lows and the upper mids are going to adjust just the same as the low and high controls on the original HM2. We can see the comparison between these two effects with the low and high mid controls maxed out. There is significantly more level on the worm for the equivalent position on the volume knob, and the mid peaks are tighter together than what we find on the Waza, giving the worm a more nasal snarl to its sound. Of course, we can use those other two EQ controls to tweak out the sound of the standard HM2 to get something a little more unique. But what if we want to go properly different? Switching down into KMA gives us a less peaky, more balanced EQ than what we find with the HM2 mode. We can see a massive reduction in the mid-range here, and the waveform ends up looking a lot more like what we find when we put a big muff on the scope, and that's reflected in the sounds. And if you fancy getting really spicy with it, we can even stack both of those tone stacks together. Just like beauty and true love, it's what's on the inside that counts, and within the slimy innards of the worm, we find trim pots associated with each of those EQ controls, which shift the frequency centre of each filter. So if you like the idea of the Waza custom mode extending the low frequencies down to the 60Hz region, then that, and much more, can be accomplished here. Each of the EQ controls has their own range that can be fine-tuned internally, so we've got a fully customisable HM2-style sound. 
It's in stacking the EQ modes together that the power of the trim pots really starts to shine. In HM2 mode, the high mid trim has no effect. The high mids are always going to be the classic HM2 high mid centred around 1.3kHz. In KMA mode, however, the high mid centre can be adjusted all the way up to 3.2kHz. When blending these two EQ modes together, we get the classic HM2 grind with the additional smaller mid peak higher up the spectrum, which can be extremely useful, especially when combined with the right adjustments of the low mids and highs to cut out any unwanted fizz and flub, as well as extending down the lows to near 60Hz to emphasise low B string chugging. I ended up using both EQ stacked together in this way for the majority of my time with this effect. So let's get real heavy with it and see where the worm takes us. I've got my Xyphus set up to B standard and the Harley Benton with the active Fishmans in drop C, so let's get some death metal on the go.
So there we have an overview of the Worm 2 from KMA Machines. If the Chainsaw Parasite has already burrowed its way into your brain and you fancy picking up one of these for the collection, then links to this product will be in the description, as always they ever are. And don't forget to click all the buttons you're supposed to to make this video viable to the ever-changing whims of the YouTube algorithm. That's all for now, keep it loud, and stay safe. That's right, I did this video without making a June joke. I've never seen June. Something about spice, I don't know.